thanks. Uh, good chunk of this meeting, we're going to be talking about the volcano experiment. So I was going to just quickly introduce the second part of component three, which is the volcano effect on decay prediction. Um, so as a background, there is still a lot of uncertainty and conflicting results on what exactly is the impact of volcanic eruptions. And particularly, there's a, there's a mismatch from what you find in the models and what people found in the observations and when they've looked at um, proxies and so on. And particular ones of, of, of interest is the uh, Northern Hemisphere's winter response, which is um, considered to be, you know, there's a, there's a good mechanism that's known for this, and there's, you end up with a positive NEO and you, uh, particular temperature distributions from that, um, but it doesn't always come out in, in all the model runs and for all the volcanoes. Um, as a response of ENSO, some people get a, a very a, um, consistent response to ENSO, some people get no response to ENSO, so it's um, also an open question. There's the hydrological, hydrological cycle, we know that that slows down, but more regionally, you know, what, what happens to the precipitation. And the, the other one of interest is this North Atlantic overturning circulation and the response to that, which generally, you know, obviously we don't know much about in observations in models. There's a general increase, maybe five to 15 years after the volcanic eruption, but there are models actually where there's a decrease from sea ice effect, so it'd be good with a good intercomparison and um, get some idea of um, interactions. And so these are the three main volcanoes that come out over our hindcast period, which is from 1960 forward, and it's the uh, Agung in 63, El Tichon in 82, and Pinatubo in 91. And you can see the, um, the green line at the bottom there is the aeros aerosol optical depths from Sato Tower shows these are the three main um, eruptions. Also in red there, you've got the CMIP-5 model mean when forced with, with um, either this data set or there's, an, there's another data set as well other than Sato et al. And then the gray shading, I don't know if that's actually visible, shows you there's, a, there's quite a lot of differences just in this top of atmosphere outgoing shortwave radiation, which is still you know, but not very specific or regionalized uh, measure. So as far as the decadal prediction community, um, our motivations is that one thing that Alan obviously brought up, what's the impact of volcanoes on decadal prediction scale? So that's, that's very important that we understand that. Um, and the other thing that's already been brought up as well, investigating the potential effects of a, of a volcanic eruption on our forecast. So we run our forecast and the volcano goes off. You know, what, what can we, how do we have to change our forecast? Um, but then there's also these more mechanistic questions. So how sensitive are, is the impact of volcanoes to the background state when the volcano goes off? You, know, you can break this down to the time of year, you know, different climate indices and so on. And we just talk, now talked about different interactions with other MIPS. Obviously, VolMIP is an obvious one. They're looking for robust, robust volcanic responses in climate models. Definitely something we can liaise with them on. Um, there's an aerosol chemistry MIP as well, which may or may not be worth uh, interacting with. So what do the experiments look like? So there's three tiers. We hope that you know, everyone will be able to do at least tier one, which is repeating 1991 without the Pinatuba forcing. So just with 2015 forcing, which is basically no, no volcanic aerosol forcing. And also repeating your 2015 forecast with the Pinatuba forcing in it. Um, tier two will help us address this question of, of uh, what's the impact on predictability from volcanic eruptions, because we'll repeat 63 and 82 without the, volcano, with, without the volcanoes, and so you'll be able to do your skill calculations again for your hindcasts without any volcanoes in them. And tier three is complementing tier two with putting in other volcanoes in your 2015 forecast. So, um, 
We're only thinking about changing the volcanic aerosols, things like greenhouse gases, ozone, other external forcings that you know, could be kept the same. As with the, with the earlier um, components, preferably 10-year hind casts, particularly if you want to you know, capture the response of the AMOC, you want to have at least 10 years, maybe even longer. But you know, five years could work as well for some of, some of the other impacts. And at least 10 ensemble members. I mean, no, there's a lot of noise in, in the response, particularly this northern hemisphere response I talked about. And it, um, so therefore, each experiment is about 50 to 100 years of um, integration. So what can we do with this data set? Um, well, you can take all the tiers and all the models, and you get this robust um, response to volcanoes. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter which volcano it was, what the background state was, and you'll see what is the response that always comes out from volcanoes. You can combine the results from all models, but look at the volcano separately and look for respon um, robust responses there. You can combine the results from all the models and all the volcanoes that you put into your 2015 forecast and see what is the robust response in the 2015 forecast to volcanic eruptions that are similar to the ones that have happened in the past. Um, and also you can look at what's the difference in the model response to changes in background state and by combining the results from all the models, so, so the same volcano in 2015 and compare it to when it actually went off and compare this for each volcano. Um, so in my talk on Thursday, I'll, I've done some preliminary analysis on similar um, experiments to this, so you'll be able to see some examples of the kind of things you can look at. That was all I was going to say. I have a couple of questions. Uh, 2015 has an El Nino, and there just happened to be an El Nino during these other three eruptions. Wouldn't it be more useful to choose a year without an El Nino to see what difference that makes? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, obviously when we do the CMIP6 experiments, it will be a bit further in the future, so we'll, we can take a more recent forecast than the 2015 forecast. So you didn't mean this, that this is the or it just could be a, a uh, yeah, the idea is it's a forecast, so it should be, you know, and ideally we should agree on the same year, but it's, it's a good point that you know, the, what the end to initial state is important for one of the things we want to try and understand how it affects the volcanic response. So if, if we ask each model to do 10 different ensemble members, are you going to ask them to choose three El Nino, three El Nino, four neutral, or? No, they'll have the same initial two conditions. Two no. no, we're all going to have to in the ensemble has the same initial conditions. All the ten members start with the same initial conditions, or slightly per, slight perturbations. Uh, uh, um, can I just put, put in because um, this is I mean this is something we we will look in, in Tormund and I think uh, here we, here the uh, the runs are initialized so they have specific conditions and this is a big difference. And I think uh, the task we have to find here is to somehow to combine or to make the best of this both approaches and find some sexy experiments for civil six or beyond. And I think we will have time on Thursday. So with uh, uh, a lot of, of important hopefully ideas to, to get it out. But I mean, this endo stuff, different phases, this is what we check in the morning. So. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't understand how. And, and about ozone. Do some of the models predict ozone, or is it specified in all the models? Because the ozone response to volcanoes then changes the response. I think most models um, don't predict the ozone, but there will probably be some in, in the TMIP6 which will. So it's be a mixture. Uh, I'm reconsidering my question, but uh, I mean, <laughs> the emphasis here is on explosive volcanoes, but is there any consideration of? You know, persistent increases in stratospheric aerosol optical depth, <clears throat> you know, which we know is having a, has had over the recent period a climate effect. It's not large, maybe 15 to 30 percent. You mean like anthropogenic aerosols? No, but these are these are consequence of a sequence of small eruptions, ah, okay. uh, which you know has had a demonstrated impact. And yeah. some people, Ben Center has a new piece of suggesting it could be much larger than people have thought before. So that's something we could we could try and design an experiment that fits with that as well. 
primarily. GeoMip is doing something like that, a persistent volcanic, yeah. persistent stratospheric layer, so uh, rather than episodic ones. So like transient, the, the increasing? No, well, yes, that's one of the experiments, yeah, the transient, transient increasing one. So it should liaise with, you know, that's already been done. Okay, great, thanks.